Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the brewery and the blog. In fact, both places. Here we are. Canning machines out. Now, yeah, you're going to say, brilliant. You're going to can the pilot kit beers, right? Uh, kind of already done it. You can see the empty fermenters down there. So we managed to get about four cases of each beer. And one thing I did notice whilst we were doing the can filling was I wanted to change the purging period for when the filler tubes lift back up out of the cans. So at the moment it was set up for filling carbonated beer and as the cans would retract out the beer they'd go quick blast of CO2 to agitate and create some foam on the head of the can so you can cap on foam. We don't fill our cans with pre-carbonated beer. We're filling them and then conditioning in the can with a little bit of dextrose as priming sugar. Therefore, that means that that little blast of CO2 is not needed, but we can't cap on foam because there isn't any. So I've modified the code to allow the CO2 second purge to be continuous for four seconds. So the tubes come up and they're constantly releasing CO2 for four seconds. And that four seconds gives us time to put a cap on each can, meaning that whilst it's not 100% CO2 covered or CO2 area, it is having CO2 blown over it, much like welding gas on a TIG welder. You know, it is that argon's coming out of the TIG torch into an already mixed nitrogen oxygen atmosphere, but the fact, the mere fact that that argon is blowing into that area creates, it pushes out of the way the atmosphere that's already there. And we're going to use the same principle for filling these cans. So that CO2 is going to spray on top of the can, on top of the beer, pushing away the oxygen-rich environment until such time a can lid gets placed over the top of the beer. And there, that's all that there is to it. So because I've done that this morning, I thought it gives me an opportunity for those of you who are new to the channel to have a look inside the control for the can filler. Here it is. So this is how it stands normally. And it's got indicator lights on there to tell you when it's ready. And then it's got a start button, etc. And then on the inside, I can't really see the viewfinder now. Let me just turn it around on the camera so I can make sure you can see what I can see. Yes, so on the inside, up along the top, we have an Arduino Uno, which is the brain box of the whole operation, which is here. This is just a little USB panel mount, so I could access it without having to take the front off, but it turns out it doesn't support data connections for some reason. So that's defunct, you don't need that. Along the top, we have all of these uh, screw terminals. These are supplying 12 volts to all of the solenoids that open and close the gas lines, the fill lines, and all that kind of jazz. No, they're not, I'm telling a lie. That's these ones on the side here. These ones up here are supplying power to the lights and uh, indicator lamps on the front. Uh, this little button here in the middle is just a start button so I can test the board without it being in the panel itself. Along the bottom there is a 24 volt power supply unit and then these MOSFETs along the top here, these are all uh, the controls. They're basically acting as uh, relays for the solenoid valves. 
and then on them we've got a little snubber diode as well and resistor pull down resistor just to prevent any voltage spikes or anything like that when uh, when, <clears throat> when the valves open and close it really is quite simple because everything is pretty much controlled by that Arduino Uno and the way it's wired up the uh, sketch for the program is still available on github which is github.com and you can find it by searching for open beer filler so it's open source software that I developed along with a few other guys last year in fact they developed it I gave I gave them like a bit of spec they did all the hard work on the code I'm very much a novice uh, this little bit on the side here is a potentiometer and that allows us to dial in the sensitivity of the trigger probe. So the trigger on the can filling mechanism is basically a wire, it's a welding rod, don't tell anyone, a wire which carries 5 volts from the analog output on the Arduino and then the frame is referenced to ground so when the dip tubes go into the liquid they're looking for a value of between 0 and 1024 now I did some experimental work with different liquids and beer tends to trigger at around 700 on that scale whereas foam only seems to give a signal of about 400 so you can use the potentiometer to set that number on the Arduino and dial out the foam so to speak so if you were having filling carbonated beer into the cans you'd be able to set it so it ignored the foam and it didn't trigger and turn off the fill valves until the probes actually touched the beer itself and it works a treat it really does and uh, it's consistent we don't get like I said earlier on much foaming on this beer because it's going in cold crashed and then we'll heat it back up in can with that priming sugar so it can re-ferment again but there are occasions when we use that potentiometer to just fine-tune the performance of the fill levels and it works an absolute treat so there we are that's a little rundown on how we've got the filler set up at the moment also there's a new addition down here on the back we've got some bouncer filters ranging from the relatively coarse micron the red one and then it runs through the blue and then finally through the fine white one and that's allowing us to get rid of any particulate matter in the beer itself because we're using relatively I'll take you off a tripod and show you this relatively cheap solenoids on the back you can see them there just 15 mil in they've got an 11 mil orifice inside so plenty of room for the beer to flow up into the 3 8 tubes on the way out and across to the stainless steel pipes but the way these solenoids work is they need to equalize pressure on both sides of a small diaphragm and that means there's a little hole that uh, you can see the black diaphragm there look so the beer needs to be able to bleed from one side to the other so that diaphragm can move freely backwards and forwards and the pressure is what turns it off again and uh, if any small particles like hops for instance find their way into the beer line then you have to take the back off of this and clean out that little particulate now previous to having these bouncer filters we introduced some stainless steel Y strainers that you'd probably see in other types of plumbing in fact you remember if you're a regular viewer of the channel many moons back that uh, myself and new to homebrew Tom both tried an experiment of making a duplex filter for our pilot kits 
with Y strainers, stainless steel Y strainers, but they clogged too readily, so that kind of failed. Therefore, initially, I took the decision to put them both in line. Here it is, because it's just been removed. And this was acting as a filter to stop the particles going through. But you'll see, if I can get into one of these, that one seems more readily available to move that the mesh inside these filters, and I think I had to modify one of them as well, and I ended up burning a bloody hole in it with a welder. But you'll see, well, there we go. The mesh is relatively fine. A little bit of moldy stuff on there, look. So uh, these would clog up really easily as well. So it wasn't ideal was constantly having to clean them, which meant an opportunity for the beer to be oxidized. So instead, we've moved to these bouncer filters and we've done all the pilot kit beers with these yesterday, and there is not actually any particulates in there at all. That's probably more down to the fact that we cold crashed the beer and transferred it into secondary before we filled. But the test is going to be today where we're taking out some of coconut shy, which is in FV5. We're going to run a few cans of that off. So we'll run it through the mill, maybe get a bit of footage of that for you later on. So we're going to grab a little bit of footage of uh, filling cans, essentially. So I don't know if you noticed but since I did the walk around this morning, I've added a Perspex screen and a little box here. And this is all in aid of kind of capturing that CO2 and preventing it from being blown away and uh, trying to reduce oxygen levels in the cans. Whilst it's not a foolproof idea, it's certainly a step in the right direction. Now we were getting pretty good uh, oxygen levels, I think, even though we don't have the ability to measure them, you can test for oxygen by proxy, by seeing how oxidised your beer is when you crack it open, uh, it's changed colour, if it's losing its hop aroma, all these kind of uh, other ways of indicating the oxidation without having to spend thousands on a DO meter, dissolved oxygen meter. And apart from the two issues we had with the New England IPAs last year, we've not had any other oxygen problems in packaging in cans. And I kind of put that down to having to use leaf hops for those two beers and they both had oats in the recipe as well, so that was probably a problem. So what we're doing with this is running it exactly the same way, but now the post CO2 purge runs for four seconds while the lids are put on top. And then all the CO2 that's dropping down, you see, it can't be blown away sideways. It has to go down and past these cans. You'll see these pipes are now purging CO2. That CO2 is falling down, I can feel it coming out. And then that putting a blanket over those cans there. And then I'm uh, going really slow now because I'm talking. But then Jerry gets the can lids on. And they're 99% protected by that point. And then they come across to me on the seamer. What else have we done to mitigate oxygen pickup on that side yet? Yeah, so the cam lids and the cans were both getting a rinse in Persib previously. And we know that Persib breaks down to oxygen and acetic acid. So we swapped it out for good old star sand. Because star sand doesn't break down uh, as readily into free radical oxygen, I don't think. Could be wrong. But as far as I'm aware, Persib's a lot more of a uh, oxidizer than, than Star San is. 
So a couple more mitigation procedures we've got going on there to keep the beer as fresh as possible. Right, and you're going to have to uh, let me switch the camera view, Jim, and catch up. Because okay. I'm going slow now, filming. So you've all seen the SEMA. Yeah, you can fire it up if you like. This is been shown many times on camera. Very simple to do. Can on the turntable on the bottom there. Lift it up and engage it with the top rollers. And then these two pinch rollers come in. Curl and press. Curl and press is what we get on the top scene. And that's solid as a rock. Right, come around this size. And then the next stage is when the cans come off the seamer, they go into some warm water to a, take the chill off them a little bit so they can start to heat back up for their can conditioning phase. But also we found to stop you getting numb fingers. And uh, it also rinses off any beer on the can. So in the future, I'd like to build a conveyor belt for all of this system, which is going to incorporate some water jets and some hot air blowers so we can rinse and dry the cans on the way to maybe a lazy Susan turntable at the end where we just have somebody picking up the already dry cans and either labelling them or putting them into a box ready to be conditioned whilst we order the labels because you can't always have the labels ready to go. And then the next step is we take these rinsed cans, so we don't have labels for these yet, we've got to figure out the ABV of the beer, send it off, well design the label then send it off and normally we can get the labels delivered within a week. And in that time these can go into a warm room and condition and then once they're conditioned they can come back out, get labelled, get boxed, and then they're ready to be sold. Um, also date coded and batch coded as well at the same time. But that's all there is to it. They're basically the three stages. So you've got can fill, you've got seam, and you've got rinse and package. And of course, you've also got on the other side, ferment and mix with uh, priming sugar and all that other good stuff but yeah it looks like I think it looks like a proper canning setup now now we've got the perspex thing on the front I think it looks really smart right I better hurry up because Gemma's waiting for me now aren't you duck
so that's beer in the bag boys and girls another canning day completed oh, I've got the camera hooked up on the side there so let's just shoot through and have a quick recap all of the pilot kit is in can I know you didn't get to see that but it looked wonderful I must apologize so we got four cans of the raspberry sour, four cans, I hope I got more than that, four cases, four cases of the lager, which has now developed a banana note, which I'm not happy about, we'll talk about that on the tasting video, and four cases of the mango sorbet style IPA, and then we also pulled off about 600 cans of coconut shy, which was uh, really well executed. I must add that these bouncer filters made my life extremely easy because they just prevented me having to unstick any stuck solenoid valves at all. So I've just got this sat with some caustic sat in the lines to give it a good clean through then I'll rinse it with some water, then some acid, then maybe some water again and then I'll blow it all clear with CO2 and then we'll put that to bed until we're ready to do yet another run of canning something not sure what, could be anything on here so I'm gonna call it squits and uh, go home relatively early for the day just after three o'clock and why not? Because I put all the hard yards in the other week when I did back-to-back -back brews for, I think it was about eight days. And that really made me want to put my feet up quite a bit. Uh, I do want to talk to you, I'm just making sure the taps are off. I do want to talk to you guys about some other things. I've been getting quite a few questions recently when I've been putting the videos up. So I'm thinking about doing a little bit of a walk and a talk around some of the equipment that we've got in the brewery for people that might be a little bit new to the channel because we've seen quite a few new subscribers becoming active in the comments section and uh, I don't always have time to type a reply down there and considering the fact that filming me brew the vacant gesture can only kind of be done so many times I think it would make good content if we talked about what we have like this boil kettle for instance it's quite interesting because it's got a condenser flue on it and all those kind of little bits so maybe we'll do that on a couple of future episodes but that's this one for now we'll see you on the next one cheers